Hello, my name is Julie, and this is KS Mom Crochets, and today is crochet podcast number 59. So I do have one finished object that I'm wearing right here <laughs> that I'm very excited to share with you all, and then I do have one whip that I'm going to show um, in this video that you haven't seen before. So um, hopefully this will be a short video, if I can just make it through the video. I've had to start this video so many times because everybody keeps standing outside the door <laughs> and making noise. So if you hear noise and pitter patter, I apologize for that. Um, but I'm gonna talk about this shirt a little bit um, and then I will adjust the camera and show you what it looks like on me standing up. So this pattern is by Kicking Crochet and it is called the Peachy Keen Tee. So this is what the cover page of the pattern looks like and with her um, name there and the name and then this is what the shirt looks like so I know this is in black and white because I don't have any colored ink but the top of the shirt um, she actually did it in a white color and then the um, body of the shirt is in a different color and then also change color for the bottom of the shirt and I just thought that it would be a really simple pattern to make for my first pattern and it used a four weight yarn because I had showed a crochet world magazine that had a um, shirt similar to this but it was done in a three weight yarn and I was kind of afraid to try that <laughs> um, because if it if I if I needed to adjust it I wouldn't know what to do because I've never made a wearable before so I thought I will just find one in a four weight um, I know that a four weight is not like the um, best yarn to use for a like summerish type shirt but I wanted to make something and I knew because I have in the past tried to use like a three weight yarn to make um, a top before and it's still in a bag like it's I'm pretty sure it's in my get rid of pile that I haven't got rid of yet. <laughs> but, um, you know, I just, uh, I wanted to finish something. That's, that was my main goal. I just wanted to finish something that I could wear and, um, see how it turned out. See if I could do it. If I understood the concept of making, um, a wearable. So that was my main reason for using a four weight yarn for this, um, for a wearable. So um, I did use Premier Anti-Peeling Everyday Worsted um, in the color Mulberry and I made a size small. Now this shirt, the sizes do go up to a 5X and I would say that it would be very easy to adjust because um, she does give you a little bit of information on how to adjust it some. But I used two full skeins of this, which has 203 yards in it. So I used two full ones. And then this is how much I had left of my third. So it didn't take very much yarn at all. Um, but like I said, this is the size small. So it goes from extra small all the way up to 5X. Um, I do have to say that for a beginner person like myself that had never made a wearable before the some of the like instructions were vague <laughs> like on how to put it together and you know it's pretty much just like this is what you do straightforward um just rows like what you do for each rows there wasn't really a lot of detail in this pattern that someone like myself that's a beginner probably needed like I probably needed that but she does have a YouTube tutorial for the stitches um, she doesn't go through how to make the shirt because this is a paid for pattern um, from Etsy I got mine from Etsy but I think it's also available on Ravelry but she does do like a swatch like a small sample piece of just going through the rows and showing you um, how to do the stitches and stuff 
So I did refer to that video quite often and it was very helpful and obviously even as a beginner um, I didn't I don't want to say that I really struggled because I didn't um, my biggest thing was I kept having to constantly count my stitches because on something that you're putting on your body <laughs> you know um, that needs to be identical panels because it is made in panels two separate panels and then you sew them at the shoulder and then you should sew it down this side and like under the arm um, they need to be identical so um, I didn't have any really big issues with it but there was some things that I was like I really wish there was more information so I did want to let you all know that so now I'm going to um, pause this and readjust my camera so that you can see what this actually looks like okay so this is the best angle that I could um, come up with but here is the shirt and hopefully you can still hear me well um, I did not sew all the way down like I left this part open where there's lace at the bottom so you do have like lace at the top I do have a um, tank top on under this because obviously it does have holes um, but that you start with like a lacy lacy pattern at the top and then you work the body different and then you repeat some of that lace lace work for the bottom so I do like the stitches I like the way that it looks um, it is a little bulky because it is a four-way yarn but I'm just happy that I that I finished something and that I can wear it you know um, the only thing that I don't like about this particular pattern is like I said it is made in two panels and you don't make your sleeves separate so what you do is you you have to um when you start making this part of the body like this area of the body you have to skip stitches so as you can see my arms should have been a lot smaller i don't like the way that this is like gaping there so i think in the future that i'll if i make another shirt one i will make it in a smaller yarn because i do know that that's better for wearables you know um i do totally understand that um but i will make it in a smaller yarn and then i think that i will also find something that has where you actually attach your sleeves instead of making it this way however i do believe that since the stitch count is there for this area of the um of the shirt and the lace work at the top is similar to the lace work at the bottom i believe that it would be easy to adjust your stitches to where that you could just make two um like make your start out with your um panels being smaller instead of making them wider for the arms and just do them like this way you know like two panels that are skinnier and then go back and add sleeves i think that you could do that with this particular pattern but myself i would rather have a pattern that is already um that that's all done for me but like i say um the front and the back of the shirt is the same and I do, I do feel like the width or the length of it is right. I like where that it hits like halfway down, you know, my hips. It comes below my hips. Um, I did add, I did add one extra row to this like lace work than what she said. I did do that. So I do like it i hope you all like it too i'm very excited to have this done and um i think that's about all that i can really show you all about it i did um she didn't really give a lot of instructions on how to seam seam it you know so i did um leave the neck area i did leave the neck area open more than what she said because I felt like that it was too 
tight. I didn't like that. So I did leave that neck area open more than what she said. So what you do is you just seam up here and then you seam up on this side and then the rest of it is just left open for your neck or whatever. And then um, to do that, I know that it is more um, pretty finished better uh, or however you would say that <laughs> if you use like the mattress stitch or like if you know use like a darning needle and sew it but I'm not a sewer y'all I don't like sewing at all unless I have to and so I did do um, single crochets up the sides and I don't think that I don't think that you can even really tell that I did that except for on the inside like I think my seaming looks pretty good and like on the top here you can't tell unless you look on the underneath so what I did is I since the panels were identical and I had to flip back and forth between my rows um, there was no right or wrong side so I just seam them up made sure I was seaming up on the right on the same side you know like when I did the shoulders and the sides and under the arms and then I just flipped it inside out so that my seam was on the inside so I think I did pretty good <laughs> for my first shirt and like I said I hope that you all um, enjoy seeing it all right so hopefully that clip um, turned out okay so I do have one whip that I want to share with you all I have not even touched I haven't touched anything since I started this shirt um, I just made a podcast a few days ago and showed some finished objects so I've not really had like a ton of crochet time I also went out of, out of town but this shirt actually worked up really quickly but this took up the majority of my crochet time but before I decided to make the shirt, I'd had started a project, but I haven't worked on it since. But since you all have not seen it, I thought I would share it with you all really quick. And if a lot of you all um, have been following me for a while, you know, back last year, I really, really got into making um, vintage doll dress patterns. And then I kind of you know, started making more amigurumis and I just hadn't picked one back up. My goal was to make a few this year. Um, I don't know. I wanted, to, I, realistically, I wanted to make one once a month, but I knew that I didn't want to put that pressure on myself. But, um, because I have a ton, I have a ton of these vintage patterns that were gifted to me or that I have bought myself and I want to make them because they're so pretty. So the one that I decided to make um, is for a 15 inch doll. Now these dolls are not available. These patterns are not available. The only place that you can find these patterns or dolls are on eBay or like a resale um, website that sells like used things you know maybe like Facebook marketplace I don't know um but I got all my stuff off eBay and like I said I was gifted a lot of things as well but this is a fiber craft looks like that fiber craft pattern and this is the southern bell and I was gifted this pattern and I fell in love with it I have been wanting to make it for a while and I thought I'm gonna do it I'm just gonna pull it out and start working on it it is a lot of stitches when you get down toward the bottom you know because it has to flare out um, so it probably will take me a while but I just wanted to go ahead and show you all what that I have done on it since I didn't really have a lot to show this video um, but like I said, this is for a 15 inch fiber craft doll. I don't have one out right now. I wish that I did so that I could show you. Um, yeah, I don't have, I don't have one within reach, but, um, I will try to show you when I get more progress. I will have it tried on a doll so you can see what it looks like, but I am changing the colors of this. Um, and I am going to use the artificial flowers like like they did in the pattern. I'm not sure about the ribbon on the hat, but I will make the hat as well. Um, and I was trying to think, well, what colors do I want to use? 
not that I have anything against yellow. I think yellow is beautiful, but I don't have a lot of like a color that I wanted to use of yellow. So I had two skeins of this yarn right here and I thought I'm just going to use this up uh, or see how much it takes because it does take a lot of yarn to make these poofy um, doll dresses. I do have one, if I can not shake the camera, I do have one right back there that I made um, last year and it takes a lot of yarn to make to make these. Um, but I'm going to be using this color right here, which is from Big Twist, um, from Joann's, and it is the color Dark Coral. Now, I'm not sure if they still have this color or not. I've had it for a long time. Um, I know that they discontinued a lot of their colors, and I'm not positive what colors they still have on there, but I really do love this color. I think it's so pretty. And so I'm going to do the body of the dress in that coral color and then I'm going to trim it in just big twist white for the trim so I will do the trim the same color but I just thought this was so pretty and I was looking at my little artificial flowers like they used on that dress and I have a flower that would match this very well so that is one of the reasons why I picked this yarn too so this is how much I have got done and then on this doll dress, I'm using a four millimeter hook. So the pattern recommended to use this hook and that's what I'm gonna be using. And this is what I have so far. So this is what it's looking like. So, so you have the top. Now these dolls, I will show one later in another podcast, but these dolls are made similar to Barbie dolls, except they are bigger. Um, and if you go back in some of my older videos, you will probably see one that is wearing a Christmas dress because I did do a 15 inch Christmas dress um, using one of these dolls. But this is what I have so far. So I don't have a ton of progress because this part um, doesn't take very long to build up because there's not a lot of stitches. <laughs> it's when you get to the bottom of the dress that takes forever because I think the biggest... Um, stitch count for this dress um, is 270 stitches and it does look like these have pan pantaloons with them that they can wear underneath the dress and I've never done that before so I may attempt that actually attempt to do the pantaloons um, it says something about a hoop I don't know if I'll do that um, I don't think I'll do the hoop, but I do think I will try the pantaloons. But um, like I said, this is all that I have done. I've got to the uh, one of the rows where the very first, like you leave your front loops to put your first ruffle. So on her, I'm about right here on this pattern. And um, so what do you all think about this colorway? Do you think it'll be pretty? Um, I'm kind of excited about it. <laughs> um, like I said, I quit working on it because I would have had a lot more done because I really enjoy doing these because essentially when you get to the skirt part, it's just straight double crochets and then you just, it's mindless, you know, um, you kind of have to look at each row, but the farther into the pattern you get, the longer the rows are. Cause like I said, the biggest stitch count is like 270. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> but it does take up a lot of yarn, so that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So I'm very excited about working on that, and um, I'm looking forward to seeing her done, and hopefully you all are excited to see another vintage pattern. Um, like I said, the only thing about doing vintage patterns is when you show them on, my, or on video, um, you can't link them or anything, so that's just something that you would have to do your own research for. But they're, they're, those, I haven't had any issue following a fiber craft pattern. Um, I know a lot of vintage patterns are, are worded kind of differently, but this one does, uh, do, they do a really good job. Like, they, they really do. Like, they even go into, um, like, detail on how to do certain stitches, like, if you don't know how to do a certain stitch, but, like, um, for example, it'll be like, um, 
single crochet in each single crochet and chain across. I mean, everybody knows how to do that. The abbreviations are the same. Um, it tells you how to decrease if you need to decrease, like, and you don't know how to do that. So, um, I don't know. I think that these are written really well for an older pattern. I'm not sure when this one was made. I know there's some other ones in this collection, too. Mm. Yeah, this one was made in 1989, so it's not that old. Um, I noticed, like, when you get back into the 60s and, like, 70s sometimes, the patterns are a lot harder than, like, the 80s and the 90s. Um, obviously, there's no pictures, you know, showing you steps of this, but, um... I don't know. I, I really enjoy it. And I hope you all enjoy having little mixes of um, vintage patterns on my channel as well. Because it's something that I really enjoy. And I have like a whole binder. <laughs> I have a whole binder full of patterns. that I just really I want to make them all. Um, I just want to make them all. And um, like I said, I have made a Christmas 15 inch doll dress. But I don't have... Um, I don't have one like for all year round so I was thinking that I would make that one because that was one of my favorites so that's all that I have for you all I'm sure this video I don't know how long it's gonna be because I did it in parts but I'm sure it's gonna be longer than what I anticipated because you know I run my mouth <laughs> I talk too much sometimes but that's okay because I know um, you all, um, some of you all enjoy hanging out with me and I really enjoy hanging out with you all and talking to you. Um, it just makes my day so much better when I get on here and make a video and, um, chat with my friends. So thank you all so much for watching and until next time, I will see you in another video. Bye.